Section twenty four of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume two, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter seven B, subsection A, the abstract work of art. The first work of art is because immediate, abstract, and particular on its own side it has to move away from this immediate and objective phase towards self-consciousness while on the other side the latter for itself endeavours in the cult to do away with the distinction which it at first gave itself in contrast to its own spirit and by so doing to produce a work of art inherently endowed with life the first way in which the artistic spirit keeps as far as possible removed from each other its form and its active consciousness is immediate in character the form assumed is there as a thing in general it breaks up into the distinction of particularity which contains the form of the self and universality which represents the inorganic elements in reference to the form adopted and is its environment and habitation this shape assumed obtains its pure form the form belonging to spirit by the whole being raised into the sphere of the pure notion it is not the crystal belonging as we saw to the level of understanding a form which housed and covered a lifeless element or is shown upon externally by a soul nor again is it that commingling of the forms of nature and thought which first arose in connection with plants thought's activity here being still an imitation rather the notion strips off the remnant of root branches and leaves still clinging to the forms purifies the forms and makes them into figures in which the crystal's straight lines and surfaces are raised into incommensurable relations so that the animation of the organic is taken up into the abstract form of understanding and at the same time its essential nature incommensurability is preserved for understanding the indwelling god however is the black stone extracted from the animal encasement and suffused with the light of consciousness the human form strips off the animal character with which it was mixed up the animal form is for the god merely an accidental vestment the animal appears alongside its true form and has no longer a value on its own account but has sunk into being a significant sign of something else has become a mere symbol by that very fact the form assumed by the god in itself casts off even the need for the natural conditions of animal existence and hints at the internal arrangements of organic life melted down into the surface of the form and pertaining only to this surface the essential being of the god however is the unity of the universal existence of nature and of self-conscious spirit which in its actuality appears confronting the former at the same time being in the first instance a particular form its existence is one of the elements of nature just as its self-conscious actuality is a particular national spirit but the former is in this unity that element reflected back into spirit nature made transparent by thoughts and united with self-conscious life the form of the gods retains therefore within it its nature element as something transcended as a shadowy obscure memory the utter chaos and confused struggle amongst the elements existing free and detached from each other the non-ethical disordered realm of titans is vanquished and banished to the outskirts of self-transparent reality to the cloudy boundaries of the world which finds itself in the sphere of spirit and is at peace these ancient gods first-born children of the union of light with darkness heaven earth ocean sun earth's aimless typhonic fire and so on are supplanted by forms and shapes which do not but darkly recall those earlier titans and which are no longer things of nature but spirits clarified by the ethical life of self-conscious nations this simple form has thus destroyed within itself restless endless individuation the individuation both in the life of nature which operates with necessity only qua universal essence but is contingent in its actual existence and process 
and also in the life of a nation which is scattered and broken into particular spheres of action and into individual centres of self-consciousness and has an existence manifold in action and meaning all this individuation the simplicity of this form has abolished and brought together into an individuality at peace with itself hence the condition of unrest stands contrasted with this form confronting quiescent individuality the essential reality stands self-consciousness which being its source and origin has nothing left over for itself except to be pure activity what belongs to the substance the artist gave entirely along with his work to himself however as a specific individuality there belongs in his work no reality he could only have conferred completeness on it by relinquishing his particular nature divesting himself of his own being and rising to the abstraction of pure action with the first and immediate act of production the separation of the work and this self-conscious activity is not yet healed again the work is therefore not by itself really a spiritual entity it is a whole only when its process of coming to be is taken along with it the obvious and common element in the case of a work of art that it is produced in consciousness and is made by the hand of man is the aspect of the notion existing qua notion and standing in contrast to the work produced and if this notion qua the artist or spectator is unselfish enough to declare the work of art to be per se absolutely spiritual and to forget himself qua agent or onlooker then as against this the notion of spirit has to be insisted on spirit cannot dispense with the moment of being conscious of itself this moment however stands in contrast to the work because spirit in this its primary disruption gives the two sides their abstract and specifically contrasted characteristics of doing something and of being a thing and their return to the unity they started from has not yet come about the artist finds out then in his work that he did not produce a reality like himself no doubt there comes back to him from his work a consciousness in the sense that a wandering multitude honours it as the spirit which is their own true nature but this way of animating or spiritualizing his work since it renders him his self-consciousness merely in the form of admiration is rather a confession that the work is not animated in the same manner as the artist since the work comes back to him in the form of gladness in general he does not find in it the pain of his self-discipline and the pain of production nor the exertion and strain of his own toil people may moreover judge the work or bring him offerings and gifts or endue it with their consciousness in whatever way they like if they with their knowledge set themselves over it he knows how much more his act is than what they understand and say if they put themselves beneath it and recognize in it their own dominating essential reality he knows himself as the master of this the work of art hence requires another element for its existence god requires another way of going forth than this in which out of the depths of his creative night he drops into the opposite into externality to the character of a thing with no self-consciousness this higher element is that of language a way of existing which is directly self-conscious existence when individual self-consciousness exists in that way it is at the same time directly a form of universal contagion complete isolation of independent self-existent cells is at once fluent continuity and universally communicated unity of the many selves it is the soul existing as soul the god then which takes language as its medium of embodiment is the work of art inherently spiritualized endowed with a soul a work which directly in its existence contains the pure activity which was apart from and in contrast to the god when existing as a thing in other words self-consciousness when its essential being becomes objective remains in direct relation with itself it is when thus at home with itself in its essential nature pure thought or devotion whose inwardness gets at the same time express existence in the hymn the hymn keeps within it the individuality of self-consciousness and this individual character is at the same time perceived to be there universal devotion kindled in every one 
is a spiritual stream which in all the manifold self-conscious units is conscious of itself as one and the same function in all alike and a simple state of being spirit being this universal self-consciousness of every one holds in a single unity its pure inwardness as well as its objective existence for others and the independent self-existence of the individual units this kind of language is distinct from another way god speaks which is not that of universal self-consciousness the oracle both in the case of the god of the religions of art as well as of the preceding religions is the necessary and the first form of divine utterance for its very principle implies that god is at once the essence of nature and of spirit and hence has not merely natural but spiritual existence as well in so far as this moment is implied primarily in its principle and is not yet realized in religion the language used is for the religious self-consciousness the speech of an alien and external self-consciousness the self-consciousness which remains alien and foreign to its religious communion is not yet there in the way its essential principle requires it should be the self is simple self-existence and thereby is altogether universal self-existence that self however which is cut off from the self-consciousness of the communion is primarily a mere particular self the content of this its own peculiar and individual form of speech is supplied from the general determinate character which the absolute spirit as such adopts in its religion thus the universal spirit of the east which has not yet particularized its existence utters about the absolute equally simple abstract and universal statements whose substantial content is sublime in the simplicity of its truth but at the same time appears because of this universality trivial to the self-consciousness developing further the further developed self which advances to being distinctively for itself rises above the pure pathos of unconscious substance gets the mastery over the objectivity of the principle of light in eastern religion and knows that simplicity of abstract truth to be the inherent reality das ansichseinde which does not possess the form of contingent existence through an utterance of an alien self but is the sure and unwritten law of the gods a law that lives for ever and no man knows what time it came as the universal truth revealed by the light of the world has here returned into what is within or what is beneath and has thus got rid of the form of contingent appearance so too on the other hand in the religion of art because god's form or shape has taken on consciousness and hence particularity in general the peculiar utterance of god who is the spirit of an ethically constituted nation is the oracle which knows its special circumstances and situation and announces what is serviceable to its interest reflective thought however satisfies itself as to the universal truths enunciated because these are known as the essential implicit reality of the nation's life and the utterance of them is thus for such reflection no longer a strange and alien speech but is its very own just as that wise man of old searched in his own thought for what was worthy and good but left it to his daemon to find out and decide the petty contingent content of what he wanted to know whether it was good for him to keep company with this or that person or good for one of his friends to go on a journey and such like unimportant things in the same way the universal consciousness draws the knowledge about the contingent from birds or trees or fermenting earth the steam from which deprives the self-conscious mind of its powers of discrimination for what is accidental is something undiscerned undiscriminated and extraneous and hence the ethical consciousness lets itself as if by a throw of the dice settle the matter in a manner that is similarly undiscriminating and extraneous if the individual by his understanding determines on a certain course and selects after consideration what is useful for him it is the specific nature of his particular character which is the ground of this self-determination the basis is just what is contingent and that knowledge which his understanding supplies as to what is useful for the individual is hence just such a knowledge as that of oracles or of the lot only that he who questions the oracle or lot 
thereby shows the ethical sentiment of indifference to what is accidental while the former on the contrary treats the inherently contingent as an essential concern of his thought and knowledge higher than both however is to make careful reflection the oracle for contingent action but yet to recognize that this very act reflected on is something contingent because it refers to what is opportune and has a relation to what is particular the true self-conscious existence which spirit receives in the form of speech which is not the utterance of extraneous and so accidental that is not universal self-consciousness is the work of art which we met with before it stands in contrast to the statue which has the character of a thing as the statue is existence in a state of rest the other is existence in a state of transience in the case of the former objectivity is set free and dispenses with the immediate presence of the self proper in the latter on the other hand objectivity is too much bound up with the self attains insufficiently to definite embodiment and is like time no longer there just as soon as it is there the religious cult constitutes the process of the two sides a process in which the divine embodiment in motion within the pure feeling element of self-consciousness and its embodiment at rest in the element of thinghood reciprocally abandon the different character each possesses and the unity which is the underlying principle of their being becomes an existing fact here in the cult the self gives itself a consciousness of the divine being descending from its remoteness into it and this divine being which was formerly the unreal and merely objective thereby receives the proper actuality of self-consciousness this principle of the cult is essentially contained and present already in the flow of the melody of the hymn these hymns of devotion are the way the self obtains immediate pure satisfaction through and within itself it is the soul purified which in the purity it thus attains is immediately and only absolute being and is one with absolute being the soul because of its abstract character is not consciousness distinguishing its object from itself and is thus merely the night of its existence and the place prepared for its form the abstract cult therefore raises the self into being this pure divine element the soul brings about the attainment of this purity in a conscious way still it is not yet the self which has descended to the depths of its being and knows itself as evil it is something that merely is a soul which cleanses its exterior with the washing of water and robes it in white while its innermost traverses the path set before itself of labour punishment and reward the way of spiritual discipline of altogether relinquishing its particularity the road by which it reaches the mansions and the fellowship of the blessed this ceremonial cult is in its first form merely in secret that is is merely a performance accomplished subjectively in idea and unrealized it has to become a real act for an unreal act is a contradiction in terms consciousness proper thereby rises to the level of its pure self-consciousness the essential being has in it the significance of a free object through the actual cult this object turns back to the self and in so far as in pure consciousness it has the significance of absolute being dwelling in its purity beyond actual reality this being descends through this mediating process of the cult from its universality into individual form and thus combines and unites with actual reality the way the two sides make their appearance in the act is of such a character that the self-conscious aspect so far as it is actual consciousness finds the absolute being manifesting itself as actual nature on the one hand nature belongs to self-consciousness as its possession and property and stands for what has no existence per se on the other hand nature is its proper immediate reality and particularity which is equally regarded as not truly real and essential and is abrogated at the same time that external nature has the opposite significance for its pure consciousness that is the significance of being the inherently real for which the self sacrifices its own relative unreality 
just as conversely the self sacrifices the unessential aspect of nature to itself the act is thereby a spiritual movement because it is this double-sided process of cancelling the abstraction of absolute being in the way devotion determines the object and making it something concrete and actual and on the other hand of cancelling the actual in the way the agent determines the object and the self acting and raising it into universality the practice of the religious cult begins therefore with the pure and simple offering up or surrender of a possession which the owner apparently considers quite useless for himself and spills on the ground or lets rise up in smoke by so doing he renounces before the ultimate being of his pure consciousness all possession and right of property and enjoyment thereof renounces personality and the reversion of his action to his self and instead reflects the act into the universal into the absolute being rather than into himself conversely however the objective ultimate being too is annihilated in that very process the animal offered up is the symbol of a god the fruits consumed are the actual living series and bacchus in the former die the powers of the upper law the olympians which has blood and actual life in the latter the powers of the lower law the furies which possesses in bloodless form secret and crafty power the sacrifice of the divine substance so far as it is active belongs to the side of self-consciousness that this concrete act may be possible the absolute being must have from the start implicitly sacrificed itself this it has done in the fact that it has given itself definite existence and made itself an individual animal and fruit of the earth the self actively sacrificing demonstrates in actual existence and sets before its own consciousness this already implicit completed self-renunciation on the part of absolute being and replaces that immediate reality which absolute being has by the higher that is that of the self making the sacrifice for the unity which has arisen and which is the outcome of transcending the particularity and separation of the two sides is not merely negative destructive fate but has a positive significance it is merely for the abstract being of the nether world that the sacrifice offered to it is wholly surrendered and devoted and in consequence it is only for that being that the reflection of personal possession and individual self-existence back into the universal is marked distinct from the self as such at the same time however this is only a trifling part and the other act of sacrifice is merely the destruction of what cannot be used and is really the preparation of the offered substance for a meal the feast that cheats the act out of its negative significance the person making the offering at that first sacrifice reserves the greatest share for his own enjoyment and reserves from the latter sacrifice what is useful for the same purpose this enjoyment is the negative power which supersedes the absolute being as well as the unity and this enjoyment is at the same time the positive actual reality in which the objective existence of absolute being is transmuted into self-conscious existence and the self has consciousness of its unity with its absolute this cult for the rest is indeed an actual act although its meaning lies for the most part only in devotion what pertains to devotion is not objectively produced just as the result when confined to the feeling of enjoyment is robbed of its external existence the cult therefore goes further and replaces this defect in the first instance by giving its devotion an objective subsistence since the cult is the common task or the individual task for each and all to do which produces for the honour and glory of god a house for him to dwell in and adornment for his presence by so doing the external objectivity of statuary is partly cancelled for by thus dedicating his gifts and his labours the worker makes god well disposed towards him and looks on his self as attached and appertaining to god furthermore this course of action is not the individual labour of the artist his particularity is dissolved in universality but it is not only the honour of god which is brought about and the blessing of his countenance and favour is not only shed in idea and imagination on the worker 
the work has also a meaning the reverse of the first which was that of self-renunciation and of honour done to what is alien and external the halls and dwellings of god are for the use of man the treasures preserved there are in time of need his own the honour which god enjoys in his decorative adornment is the honour and glory of a refined artistic and high-spirited nation at the festival season the people adorn their own dwellings their own garments and their establishments too with the furnishings of elegance and grace in this manner they receive a return for their gifts from a responsive and grateful god and receive the proofs of his favour wherewith the nation became bound to the god because of the work done for him not as a hope and a deferred realisation but rather in testifying to his honour and in presenting gifts the nation finds directly and at once the enjoyment of its own wealth and adornment end of section twenty four section twenty five of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black bailey this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phone chapter seven b subsection b the living work of art that nation which approaches its god in the cult of the religion of art is an ethically constituted nation knowing its state and the actions of the state to be the will and the achievement of its own activity this universal spirit confronting the self-conscious nation is consequently not the light of the world which being selfless does not contain the certainty of the individual selves but is only their universal ultimate being and the dominating imperious power wherein they disappear the religious cult of this simple unembodied ultimate being gives back therefore to its votaries in the main merely this that they are the nation of their god it secures for them merely their stable subsistence and their bare substance as a whole it does not secure for them their actual self this is indeed rejected for they revere their god as the empty profound not as spirit the cult however of the religion of art on the other hand dispenses with that abstract simplicity of the absolute being and therefore with its profundity but that being which is directly at one with the self is inherently spirit and comprehending truth although not yet known explicitly in other words it does not know the depths of its nature because this absolute then implies self consciousness finds itself at home with it when it appears and in the cult this consciousness receives not merely the general title to its own subsistence but also its self-conscious existence within it just as conversely in a despised and outcast nation whose mere substance is acknowledged the absolute being has not a selfless reality but in the nation whose self is acknowledged as living in its substance from the ceremonial cult then self-consciousness that is at peace and satisfied in its ultimate being turns away as also does the god that has entered into self-consciousness as into its place of habitation this place is by itself the night of mere substance or its pure individuality but no longer the strained and striving individuality of the artist which has not yet reconciled itself with its essential being that gradually becomes objective it is substance satisfied having its pathos within it and in want of nothing because it comes back from mere intuition from objectivity which is overcome and superseded this pathos is by itself the being of the orient a being however which has now set and disappeared within itself and has its own setting self-consciousness within it and so contains existence and reality it has here traversed the process of its actualization descending from its pure essentiality and becoming an objective force of nature and the expressions of this force it is an existence relative to an other an objective existence for the self by which it is consumed the silent inner being of selfless nature attains in its fruits the stage where nature duly prepared and digested is offered as material for the life which has a self in its being useful for food and drink it reaches its highest perfection 
for therein it is the possibility of a higher existence and comes in touch with spiritual existence in its metamorphosis the spirit of the earth has developed and become partly a silently energizing substance partly spiritual ferment in the first case it is the feminine principle the nursing mother in the other the masculine principle the self-driving force of self-conscious existence in this enjoyment then that orient light of the world is discovered for what it really is enjoyment is the mystery of its being for mysticism is not concealment of a secret or ignorance it consists in the self knowing itself to be one with absolute being and in this latter therefore becoming revealed only the self is revealed to itself or what is manifest is so merely in the immediate certainty of itself but it is just in such certainty that simple absolute being has been placed by the cult as a thing that can be used it has not only existence which is seen felt smelt tasted it is also object of desire and by actually being enjoyed it becomes one with the self and thereby disclosed completely to this self and made manifest when we say of anything it is manifest to reason to the heart it is in point of fact still secret for it still lacks the actual certainty of immediate existence both the certainty regarding what is objective and the certainty of enjoyment a certainty which in religion however is not only immediate and unreflecting but at the same time fully cognitive certainty of self what has thus been through the cult revealed to the self-conscious spirit within itself is simple absolute being and this has been revealed partly as the process of passing out of its dark night of concealment up to the level of consciousness to be there its silently nurturing substance partly however as the process of losing itself again in nether darkness in the self and of waiting above merely with the silent yearning of motherhood the more conspicuous moving impulse however is the variously named light of the east and its tumult of heaving life which having likewise desisted from its abstract state of being has first embodied itself in objective existence in the fruits of the earth and then surrendering itself to self-consciousness attained there to its proper realization and now it curvets and careers about in the guise of a crowd of excited fervid women the unrestrained revel of nature in self-conscious form still however it is only absolute spirit in the sense of this simple abstract being not a spirit per se that is discovered to consciousness that is it is merely immediate spirit the spirit of nature its self-conscious life is therefore merely the mystery of the bread and the wine of cirrus and bacchus not of the other the strictly higher gods of olympus whose individuality includes as an essential moment self-consciousness as such spirit has not yet qua self-conscious spirit offered itself up to it and the mystery of bread and wine is not yet the mystery of flesh and blood this unstable divine revel must come to rest as an object and the enthusiasm which did not reach consciousness must produce a work which confronts it as the statue stands over against the enthusiasm of the artist in the previous case a work too that is equally complete and finished yet not as an inherently lifeless but as a living self such a cult is the festival which man makes in his own honour though not imparting to a cult of that kind the significance of the absolute being for it is the ultimate being that is first revealed to him not yet spirit not such a being as essentially takes on human form but this cult provides the basis for this revelation and lays out its moments individually and separately thus we here get the abstract moment of the living embodiment of ultimate being just as formerly we had the unity of both in the state of unconstrained emotional fervency in the place of the statue man thus puts himself as the form elaborated and moulded for perfectly free movement just as the statue is the perfectly free state of quiescence if every individual knows how to play the part at least of a torch-bearer one of them comes prominently forward who is the very embodiment of the movement the smooth elaboration the fluent energy and force of all the members he is a lively and living work of art which matches strength with its beauty 
and to him is given as a reward for his force and energy the adornment with which the statue was decorated in the former type of religion and the honour of being amongst his own nation instead of a god in stone the highest bodily representation of what the essential being of the nation is in both the representations which have just come before us there is present the unity of self-consciousness and spiritual being but they still lack their due balance and equilibrium in the case of the bacchic revelling enthusiasm the self is beside itself in bodily beauty of form it is spiritual being that is outside itself the gloominess of consciousness in the one case and its wild stammering utterance must be taken up into the transparent existence of the latter and the clear but spiritless form of the latter into the emotional inwardness of the former the perfect element in which the inwardness is as external as the externality is inward is once again language but it is neither the language of the oracle entirely contingent in its content and altogether individual in character nor is it the emotional hymn sung in praise of a merely individual god nor is it the meaningless stammer of delirious bacchantic revelry it has attained to its clear and universal content and meaning its content is clear for the artificer has passed out of the previous state of entirely insubstantial enthusiasm and worked himself into a definite shape which is his own proper existence permeated through all its movements by self-conscious soul and is that of his contemporaries its content is universal for in this festival which is to the honour of man there vanishes the one-sidedness peculiar to figures represented in statues which merely contain a national spirit a determinate character of the godhead the finely built warrior is indeed the honour and glory of his particular nation but he is a physical or corporeal individuality in which are sunk out of sight the expanse and depth of meaning the seriousness of significance and the inner character of the spirit which underlies the particular mode of life the cravings the needs and the customs of his nation in relinquishing all this for complete corporeal embodiment spirit has laid aside the particular impressions the special tones and chords of that nature which it as the actual spirit of the nation includes its nation therefore is no longer conscious in this spirit of its special particular character but rather of having laid this aside and of the universality of its human existence End of section twenty five section twenty six of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black bailey this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phone chapter seven b subsection c the spiritual work of art the national spirits which find their being in the form of some particular animal coalesce into one single spirit thus it is that the separate artistically beautiful national spirits combine to form a pantheon the element and habitation of which is language pure intuition of self in the sense of universal human nature takes when the national or tribal spirit is actualized this form the national spirit combines with the others which together with it constitute through nature and natural conditions one people in a common undertaking and for this task builds up a collective nation and with that a collective heaven this universality to which spirit attains in its existence is nevertheless merely this first universality which to begin with starts from the individuality of ethical life has not yet overcome its immediacy has not yet built up a single state out of these separate national elements the ethical life of an actual national spirit rests partly on the simple confiding trust of individuals in the whole of their nation partly in the direct share which all in spite of differences of position take in the decisions and acts of its government in the union not in the first instance to secure a permanent order but merely for a common act that freedom of participation on the part of each and all is for the nonce set aside this first community of life is therefore an assemblage of individualities rather than the dominion and control of abstract thought 
which would rob the individuals of their self-conscious share in the will and act of the whole the assembly of national spirits constitutes a circle of forms and shapes which now embraces the whole of nature as well as the whole ethical world they are too under the supreme command rather than the supreme dominion of one by themselves they are the universal substances embodying what the self-conscious essential reality inherently is and does this however constitutes the moving force and in the first instance at least the centre with which those universal entities are concerned and which to begin with seems to unite in a merely accidental way all that they variously accomplish but it is the return of the divine being to self-consciousness which already contains the reason that self-consciousness forms the centre for those divine forces and conceals their essential unity in the first instance under the guise of a friendly external relation between both worlds the same universality which belongs to this content has necessarily also that form of consciousness in which the content appears it is no longer the concrete acts and deeds of the cult it is an action which is not indeed raised as yet to the level of the notion but only to that of ideas the synthetic connection of self-conscious and external existence the element in which these presented ideas exist language is the earliest language the epic as such which contains the universal content at any rate universal in the sense of completeness of the world presented though not in the sense of universality of thought the minstrel is the individual and actual spirit from whom as a subject of this world it is produced and by whom it is born his pathos is not the deafening powers of nature but mnemosyne recollection a gradually involved inwardness the memory of an essential mode of being once directly present he is the organ and instrument whose content is passing away it is not his own self which is of any account but his muse his universal song what however is present in fact has the form of an inferential process where the one extreme of universality the world of gods is connected with individuality the minstrel through the middle term of particularity the middle term is the nation in its heroes who are individual men like the minstrel but only ideally presented and thereby at the same time universal like the free extreme of universality the gods in this epic then what is inherently established in the cult the relation of the divine to the human is set forth and displayed as a whole to consciousness the content is an act of the essential being conscious of itself acting disturbs the peace of the substance and awakens the essential being and by so doing its simple unity is divided into parts and opened up into the manifold world of natural powers and ethical forces the act is the violation of the peaceful earth it is the trench which vivified by the blood of the living calls forth the spirits of the departed who are thirsting for life and who receive it in the action of self-consciousness there are two sides to the business the universal activity is concerned to accomplish the side of the self in virtue of which it is brought about by a collection of actual nations with the prominent individualities at the head of them and the side of the universal in virtue of which it is brought about by their substantial forces the relation of the two however took formerly the character of being the synthetic connection of universal and individual that is of being the process of ideal presentation on this specific character depends the judgment regarding this world the relation of the two is by this means a commingling of both which illogically divides the unity of the action and in a needless fashion throws the act from one side over to the other the universal powers assume the form of individual beings and thus have in them the principle from which action comes when they effect anything therefore this seems to proceed as entirely from them and to be as free as in the case of men hence both gods and men have done one and the same thing the seriousness with which those divine powers go to work is ridiculously unnecessary since they are in point of fact the moving force of the individualities engaged in the acts while the strain and toil of the latter again is an equally useless effort since the former direct and manage everything 
overzealous mortal creatures who are as nothing are at the same time the mighty self that brings into subjection universal beings violates the gods and procures for them actual reality and an interest in acting just as conversely these powerless gods these impotent universal beings which procure their sustenance from the gifts of men and through men first get something to do are the natural inner principle and the substance of all events as also the ethical material and the pathos of action if their cosmic natures first get reality and the sphere of effectual operation through the free self of individuality it is also the case that they are the universal which withdraws from and avoids this connection remains unrestricted and unconstrained in its own character and by the inexhaustible elasticity of its unity extinguishes the atomic singleness of the individual acting and his various aspects preserves itself in its purity and dissolves all that is individual in the current of its own continuity just as the gods fall into this contradictory relation with the antithetic nature having the form of self in the same way their universality comes into conflict with their own specific character and the relation in which it stands to others they are the eternal and resplendent individuals who exist in their own calm and are removed from the changes of time and the influence of alien forces but they are at the same time determinate elements particular gods and thus stand in relation to others but that relation to others which in virtue of the opposition it involves is one of strife is a comic self-forgetfulness of their eternal nature the determinateness they possess is rooted in the divine subsistence and in its specific limitation has the independence of the whole individuality owing to this their characters at once lose the sharpness of their distinctive peculiarity and in their ambiguity blend together one purpose of their activity and their activity itself being directed against an other and so against an invincible divine force are a contingent and futile piece of bravado which passes away at once and transforms the pretence of seriousness in the act into a harmless self-confident piece of sport with no result and no issue if however in the nature of their divinity the negative element the specific determinateness of that nature appears merely as the arbitrariness of their activity and as the contradiction between the purpose and result and if that independent self-confidence outweighs and overbalances the element of determinateness then by that very fact the pure force of negativity confronts and opposes their nature and moreover with a power to which it must finally submit and over which it can in no way prevail they are the universal and the positive as against the individual self of mortals which cannot hold out against their power and might but the universal self for that reason hovers over these mortal selves and over this whole world of ideal presentation to which the entire content belongs and is for them the empty form of bare necessity not determined conceptually a mere event to which they stand related selfless and sorrowing for these determinate natures do not find themselves in this purely formal necessity this necessity however is the unity of the notion a unity dominating and controlling the contradictory independent subsistence of the individual moments a unity in which the inconsistency and fortuitousness of their action is coherently regulated and the sportive character of their acts receives its serious value in those moments themselves the content of the world of ideal presentation carries on its process in the midst unrestrained and detached by itself gathering round the individuality of some hero who however feels the strength and splendour of his life broken and mourns the early death he sees ahead of him for the actual individuality firmly fixed in itself is isolated and excluded to the utmost point and severed into its elements which have not yet found each other and united the one individual element the abstract unreal moment is necessity which takes no share in the life of the mediating term just as little as does the other the concrete real individual element the minstrel who keeps himself outside it and disappears in what he ideally presents both extremes must get nearer the content 
the one necessity has to get filled with it the other the language of the minstrel must have a share in it and the content formerly left to itself must preserve in it the certainty and the fixed character of the negative this higher language that of tragedy gathers and keeps more closely together the dispersed and disintegrated moments of the inner essential world and the world of action the substance of the divine falls apart in accordance with the nature of the notion into its shapes and forms and their movement is likewise in conformity with that notion in regard to form the language here ceases to be narrative in virtue of the fact that it enters into the content just as the content ceases to be merely one that is ideally presented the hero is himself the spokesman and the representation given brings before the audience who are also spectators self-conscious human beings who know their own rights and purposes the power and the will belonging to their specific nature and who know how to state them they are artists who do not express with unconscious naivete and naturalness the merely external aspect of what they begin and what they decide upon as is the case in the language accompanying ordinary action in actual life they make the very inner being external they prove the righteousness of their action and the pathos controlling them is soberly asserted and definitely expressed in its universal individuality free from all accident of circumstance and the particular peculiarities of personalities lastly it is in actual human beings that these characters get existence human beings who impersonate heroes and represent them in actual speech not in the form of a narrative but speaking in their own person just as it is essential for a statue to be made by human hands so is the actor essential to his mask not as an external condition from which artistically considered we have to abstract or so far as abstraction must certainly be made we thereby state just that art does not yet contain in it the true and proper self the general ground on which the movement of these shapes produced from the notion takes place is the consciousness of the first form of language where the content is ideally presented and its details spread out without reference to self it is the commonality in general whose wisdom finds utterance in the chorus of the elders in the powerlessness of this chorus the generality finds its representative because the common people itself compose merely the positive and passive material for the individuality of the government confronting it lacking the power to negate and oppose it is unable to hold together and keep within bounds the riches and varied fullness of divine life it allows each individual moment to go off its own way and in its hymns of honour and reverence praises each individual moment as an independent god now this god and now again another where however it detects the seriousness of the notion and perceives how the notion proceeds to deal with these forms shattering them as it goes along and where it comes to see how badly its praised and honoured gods come off when they venture on the ground where the notion holds sway there is not itself the negative power actively setting to work but keeps itself within the abstract selfless thought of such power confines itself to the consciousness of alien and external destiny and produces the empty wish to tranquillize and feeble ineffective talk intended to appease in its terror before the higher powers which are the immediate arms of the substance in its terror before their struggle with one another and before the simple and uniform action of that necessity which crushes them as well as the living beings bound up with them in its compassion for these living beings whom it knows at once to be the same with itself it is conscious of nothing but ineffective horror of this whole process conscious of equally helpless pity and in fine the mere empty piece of surrender to necessity whose work is apprehended neither as the necessary act of character nor as the action of the absolute being within itself spirit does not appear in its dissociated multiplicity on the plane of this spectacular consciousness the indifferent ground as it were of presentation it comes on the scene in the simple diremption of the notion its substance manifests itself therefore merely torn asunder into its two extreme powers these elementary universal beings are at the same time self-conscious individualities 
heroes who put their conscious life into one of these powers find therein determinateness of character and procure their effective activity and reality this universal individualization descends again as will be remembered to the immediate reality of existence proper and is presented before a crowd of spectators who find in the chorus their image and counterpart or rather their own thought giving itself expression the content and movement of spirit which is object to itself here have already been considered as the nature and realization of the substance of ethical life in its form of religion spirit attains to consciousness about itself or reveals itself to its consciousness in its purer form and its simpler mode of embodiment if then the ethical substance by its very principle broke up as regards its content into two powers which were defined as divine and human law law of the nether world and law of the upper world the one the family the other state sovereignty the first bearing the impress and character of woman the other that of man in the same way the previously multiform circle of gods with its wavering and unsteady characteristics confines itself to these powers which owing to this feature are brought closer to individuality proper for the previous dispersion of the whole into manifold abstract forces which appear hypostatized is the dissolution of the subject which comprehends them merely as moments in itself and individuality is therefore only the superficial form of those entities conversely a further distinction of characters than that just named is to be imputed to contingent and inherently external personality at the same time the essential nature in the case of ethical substance gets divided in its form that is with respect to knowledge spirit when acting appears qua consciousness over against the object on which its activity is directed and which in consequence is determined as the negative of the knowing agent the agent finds himself thereby in the opposition of knowing and not knowing he takes his purpose from his own character and knows it to be essential ethical fact but owing to the determinateness of his character he knows merely the one power of substance the other remains for him concealed and out of sight the objectively present reality therefore is one thing in itself and another for consciousness the higher and lower right come to signify in this connection the power that knows and reveals itself to consciousness and the power concealing itself and lurking in the background the one is the aspect of light the god of the oracle who as regards its natural aspect light has sprung from the all-illuminating sun knows all and reveals all phoebus and zeus who is his father but the commands of this truth-speaking god and his proclamations of what is are really deceptive and fallacious for this knowledge is in its very principle directly not knowledge because consciousness in acting is inherently this opposition he who had the power to unlock the riddle of the sphinx and he too who trusted with childlike confidence are therefore both sent to destruction through what the god reveals to them the priestess through whose mouth the gracious god speaks is in nothing different from the equivocal sisters of fate who drive their victim to crime by their promises and who by the double-tongued equivocal character of what they give out as a certainty deceive the king when he relies upon the manifest and obvious meaning of what they say there is a type of consciousness that is purer than the latter which believes in witches and more discriminating more thorough and more solid than the former which puts its trust in the priestess and the gracious god this type of consciousness therefore lets his revenge tarry for the revelation which the spirit of his father makes regarding the crime that did him to death and institutes other proofs in addition for the reason that the spirit giving the revelation might possibly be the devil this mistrust has good grounds because the knowing consciousness takes its stand on the opposition between certainty of itself on the one hand and the objective essential reality on the other ethical rightness which insists that actuality is nothing per se in opposition to absolute law finds out that its knowledge is one-sided its law merely a law of its own character and that it has laid hold of merely one of the powers of the substance the act itself is this inversion of what is subjectively known into its opposite into objective existence 
turns round what is right from the point of view of character and knowledge into the right of the very opposite with which the former is bound up in the essential nature of the substance turns it into the furies who embody the right of the other power and character awakened into hostility the lower right sits with zeus and throne and enjoys equal respect and homage with the god revealed and known to these three supernatural beings the world of the god of the chorus is limited and restricted by the acting individuality the one is the substance the power presiding over the hearth and home and the spirit worshipped by the family as well as the universal power dominating state and government since this distinction belongs to the substance as such it is when ideally presented not individualized as two distinct forms of the substance but has in actual reality the two persons of its characters on the other hand the distinction between knowing and not knowing falls within each of the actual self-consciousnesses and only in abstraction in the element of universality does it get divided into two individual shapes for the self of the hero only exists as a whole consciousness and hence includes essentially the whole of the distinction belonging to the form but its substance is determinate and only one side of the content distinguished belongs to him hence both sides of consciousness which have in concrete reality no separate individuality peculiarly their own receive when ideally represented each its own particular form the one that of the god revealed the other that of the furies keeping themselves concealed in part both enjoy equal honour while again the form assumed by the substance zeus is the necessity of the relation of the two to one another the substance is the relation one that knowledge is for itself but finds its truth in what is simple two that the distinction through and which actual consciousness exists has its basis in that inner being which destroys it three that the clear conscious assurance of certainty has its confirmation in forgetfulness consciousness disclosed this opposition by action through doing something acting in accordance with the knowledge revealed it finds out the deceptiveness of that knowledge and being committed in view of the inner meaning to one of the attributes of substance it did violence to the other and thereby gave the latter right as against itself when following that god who knows and reveals himself it really seized hold of what is not revealed and repents of having trusted the knowledge whose equivocal character since this is its very nature had to come also before it and admonition there an end to be found the frenzy of the priestess the inhuman shape of the witches the voices of trees and birds dreams and so on are not ways in which truth appears they are admonitory signs of deception of want of discernment of the individual and accidental character of knowledge or what comes to the same thing the opposite power which consciousness has violated is present as express law and authentic right whether law of the family or law of the state while consciousness on the other hand pursued its own proper knowledge and hid from itself what was revealed the truth however of the opposing powers of content and consciousness is the final result that both are equally right and hence in their opposition which comes about through action are equally wrong the process of action proves their unity in the mutual overthrow of both powers and the self-conscious characters the reconciliation of the opposition with itself is the leth of the netherworld in the form of death or the leth of the upper world in the form of absolution not from guilt for consciousness cannot deny its guilt because the act was done but from the crime and of the atoning consolation and peace of soul which absolution gives both are forgetfulness the disappearance of the reality and action of the powers of the substance its component individualities and of the powers of the abstract thought of good and evil for none of them by itself is the real essence this consists in the undisturbed calm of the whole within itself the immovable unity of fate the quiescent existence and hence want of activity and vitality in the family and government and the equal honour and consequent indifferent unreality of apollo and the furies and the return of their spiritual life and activity into zeus solely and simply this destiny completes the depopulation of heaven of that unthinking mixture of individuality and ultimate being 
a blending whereby the action of this absolute being appears as something incoherent inconsistent contingent unworthy of itself for individuality when attaching in a merely superficial way to absolute being is unessential the expulsion of such unreal insubstantial ideas which was demanded by the philosophers of antiquity thus already has its beginning in tragedy in general through the fact that the division of the substance is controlled by the notion and hence individuality is the essential individuality and the specific determinations are absolute characters the self-consciousness represented in tragedy knows and acknowledges on that account only one highest power zeus this zeus is known and acknowledged only as the power of the state or of the hearth and home and in the opposition falling inside knowledge merely as the father of the particular knowledge assuming a definite shape he is the zeus acknowledged in the taking of oaths the zeus of the furies the zeus of what is universal of the inner being dwelling in concealment the further moments taken from the notion begriff and dispersed in the form of ideal presentation Borstellung, moments which the chorus permits to hold good one after the other are on the other hand not the pathos of the hero they sink to the level of passions in the hero to the level of accidental insubstantial moments which the impersonal chorus no doubt praises but which are not capable of constituting the character of heroes nor of being expressed and regarded by them as their real nature but further the persons of the divine being itself as well as the characters of its substance coalesce into the simplicity of what is devoid of consciousness this necessity has in contrast to self-consciousness the characteristic of being the negative power of all the forms that appear a power in which they do not recognize themselves but perish therein the self appears as merely allotted amongst the different characters and not as the mediating factor of the process but self-consciousness the simple certainty of self is in point of fact the negative power the unity of zeus the unity of the substantial essence and abstract necessity it is the spiritual unity into which everything returns because actual self-consciousness is still distinguished from the substance and fate it is partly the chorus or rather the crowd looking on whom this movement of the divine life fills with fear as being something alien and strange or in whom this movement as something closely touching themselves produces merely the emotion of passive pity partly again so far as consciousness co-operates and belongs to the various character this alliance is of an external kind is a hypocrisy because the true union that of self fate and substance is not yet present the hero who appears before the onlookers breaks up into his mask and the actor into the person of the play and the actual self the self-consciousness of the heroes must step forth from its mask and be represented as knowing itself to be the fate both of the gods of the chorus and of the absolute powers themselves and as being no longer separated from the chorus the universal consciousness comedy has then first of all the aspect that actual self-consciousness represents itself as the fate of the gods these elemental beings are qua universal moments no definite self and are not actual they are indeed endowed with the form of individuality but this is in their case merely put on and does not really and truly suit them the actual self has no such abstract moment as its substance and content the subject therefore is raised above such a moment as it would be above a particular property and when clothed with this mask gives utterance to the irony of such a property trying to be something on its own account the pretentious claims of the universal abstract nature are shown up and discovered in the actual self it is seen to be caught and held in a concrete reality and lets the mask drop just when it wants to be something right the self appearing here in its significance as something actual plays with the person which it once puts on in order to be its own person but it breaks away from this seeming and pretense just as quickly again and comes out in its own nakedness and usual character which it shows not to be distinct from the proper self the actor nor again from the onlooker 
this general dissolution which the formerly embodied essential nature as a whole undergoes when it assumes individuality becomes in its content more serious and hence more petulant and bitter in so far as the content possesses its more serious and necessary meaning the divine substance combines the meaning of natural and ethical essentiality as regards the natural element actual self-consciousness shows in the very fact of applying elements of nature for its adornment for its abode and so on and again in feasting on its own offering that itself is the fate to which the secret is disclosed no matter what its position with regard to the independent substantiality of nature in the mystery of the bread and wine it makes its very own this self-subsistence of nature together with the significance of inner reality and in comedy it is conscious of the irony lurking in this meaning so far again as this meaning contains the essence of ethical reality it is partly the nation in its two aspects of the state or demos proper and individual family life partly however it is self-conscious pure knowledge or rational thought of the universal demos the general mass which knows itself as master and governor and is also aware of being the insight and intelligence which demand respect exerts compulsion and is befooled through the particularity of its actual life and exhibits the ludicrous contrast between its own opinion of itself and its immediate existence between its necessity and contingency its universality and its vulgarity if the principle of its individual existence cut off from the universal breaks out in the proper form of actual reality and openly usurps and administers the commonwealth to which it is a secret harm and detriment then immediately there is disclosed the contrast between the universal in the sense of an abstract theory and that with which practice is concerned there stands exposed the entire emancipation of the ends and aims of the mere individual from all universal order and the scorn the mere individual shows for such order rational thinking removes contingency of form and shape from the divine being and in opposition to the uncritical wisdom of the chorus a wisdom giving utterance to all sorts of ethical maxims and stamping with validity and authority a multitude of laws and specific conceptions of duty and of right rational thought lifts these into the simple ideas of the beautiful and the good the process of this abstraction is the consciousness of the dialectic involved in these maxims and laws themselves and hence the consciousness of the disappearance of that absolute validity with which they previously appeared since the contingent character and superficial individuality which mere presentation lent to the divine beings vanish they are left as regard their natural aspect with merely the nakedness of their immediate existence they are clouds a passing vapour like those presentations having passed in accordance with their essential character as determined by thought into the simple thoughts of the beautiful and the good these latter submit to being filled with every kind of content the force of dialectic knowledge puts determinate laws and maxims of action at the mercy of the pleasure and levity of youth led astray therewith and gives weapons of deception into the hands of solicitous and apprehensive old age restricted in its interests to the individual details of life the pure thoughts of the beautiful and the good thus display a comic spectacle through their being set free from opinion which contains both their determinateness in the sense of content and also their absolute determinateness the firm hold of consciousness upon them they become empty and on that very account the sport of the private opinion and caprice of any chance individuality here then the fate formerly without consciousness consisting in mere rest and forgetfulness and separated from self-consciousness is united with self-consciousness the individual self is the negative force through which and in which the gods as also their moments nature as existent fact and the thoughts of their determinate characters pass away and disappear at the same time the individual self is not the mere vacuity of disappearance but preserves itself in this very nothingness holds to itself and is the sole and only reality the religion of art is fulfilled and consummated in it and is come full circle through the fact that it is the individual consciousness in its certainty of self which is shown to be this absolute power 
this latter has lost the form of something ideally presented vorgestellt, separated from and alien to consciousness in general as were the statue and also the living embodiment of beauty or the content of the epic and the powers and persons of tragedy nor again is the unity the unconscious unity of the cult and the mysteries rather the self proper of the actor coincides with the part he impersonates just as the onlooker is perfectly at home in what is represented before him and sees himself playing in the drama before him what this self-consciousness beholds is that that which assumes the form of essentiality as against self-consciousness is resolved and dissolved within its thought its existence and action and is quite at its mercy it is the return of everything universal into certainty of self a certainty which in consequence is this complete loss of fear of everything strange and alien and complete loss of substantial reality on the part of what is alien and external such certainty is a state of spiritual good health and of self-abandonment thereto on the part of consciousness in a way that outside this kind of comedy is not to be found anywhere End of section 26. Section 27 of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume 2, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 7c Revealed Religion, Part 1 through the religion of art spirit has passed from the form of substance into that of subject for art brings out its shape and form and imbues it with the nature of action or establishes in it the self-consciousness which merely disappears in the awesome substance and in the attitude of simple trust does not itself comprehend itself this incarnation in human form of the divine being begins with the statue which has in it only the outward shape of the self while the inner life thereof its activity falls outside it in the case of the cult however both aspects have become one in the outcome of the religion of art this unity in being completely attained has at the same time also passed over to the extreme of self in the type of spirit which becomes perfectly certain of itself in the individual existence of consciousness all essential content is swallowed up and submerged the proposition which gives this light-hearted action expression runs thus the self is absolute being the being which was substance and in which the self was the accidental element has dropped to the level of a predicate and in this self-consciousness over against which nothing appears in the form of objective being spirit has lost its aspect of consciousness this statement the self is absolute being belongs as is evident on the face of it to the non-religious the concrete actual spirit and we have to recall what the form thereof is which gives expression to it this form will contain at once the movement of that spirit and its conversion which lowers the self to the note of a predicate and raises substance into subject this we must understand to take place in such a way that the converse statement does not per se or for us make substance into subject or what is the same thing does not reinstate substance again so that the consciousness of spirit is carried back to its commencement in natural religion but rather in such a way that this conversion is brought about for and through self-consciousness itself since this latter consciously gives itself up it is preserved and maintained in thus relinquishing itself and remains the subject of the substance but as being likewise self-relinquished it has at the same time the consciousness of this substance in other words since by thus offering itself up it produces substance as subject this subject remains its own very self if then taken the two propositions in the first the subject merely disappears in substantiality and in the second the substance is merely a predicate and both sides are thus present in each with contrary inequality of value the result hereby effected is that the union and transfusion of both natures subject and substance become apparent in this union both with equal value and worth are at once essential and also merely moments 
hence it is that spirit is equally consciousness of itself as its objective substance as well as simple self-contained self-consciousness the religion of art belongs to the spirit animating the ethical sphere the spirit which we formerly saw sink and disappear in the condition of right that is in the proposition the self as such the abstract person is absolute being in ethical life the self is absorbed in the spirit of its nation it is universality filled to the full simple abstract individuality however rises out of this content and its light-heartedness clarifies and rarifies it till it becomes a person and attains the abstract universality of right here the substantial reality of the ethical spirit is lost the abstract insubstantial spirits of national individuals are gathered together into a pantheon not into a pantheon represented in idea vorstellung whose impotent form lets each alone to do as it likes but into the pantheon of abstract universality of pure thought which disembodies them and bestows on the spiritless self on the individual person complete existence on its own account but this self through its being empty has let the content go this consciousness is being merely within itself its own very existence the legal recognition of the person is an unfulfilled empty abstraction it thus really possesses merely the thought of itself in other words as it there exists and knows itself as object it is something unreal consequently it is merely stoic independence the independence of thought and this finds by passing through the process of scepticism its ultimate truth in that form we called the unhappy self-consciousness the soul of despair this knows how the case stands with the actual claims to validity which the abstract legal person puts forward as also with the validity of these claims in pure thought in stoicism it knows that a vindication of such claims means really being altogether lost it is just this loss become conscious of itself and is the surrender and relinquishment of its knowledge about itself we see that this unhappy consciousness constitutes the counterpart and the complement of the perfectly happy consciousness that of comedy all divine reality goes back into this latter type of consciousness it means in other words the complete relinquishment and emptying of substance the former on the contrary is conversely the tragic fate that befalls certainty of self which aims at being absolute at being self-sufficient it is consciousness of the loss of everything of significance in this certainty of itself and of the loss even of this knowledge or certainty of self the loss of its substance as well as of self it is the bitter pain which finds expression in the cruel words god is dead in the condition of right or law then the ethical world has vanished and its type of religion has passed away in the mood of comedy the unhappy consciousness the soul of despair is just the knowledge of all this loss it has lost both the worth and dignity it attached to its immediate personality as a legal person as well as that attaching to its personality when reflected in the medium of thought in the case of stoicism trust in the eternal laws of the gods is silenced just as the oracles are dumb whose work it was to know what was right in particular cases the statues set up are now corpses in stone whence the animating soul has flown while the hymns of praise are words from which all belief has gone the tables of the gods are bereft of spiritual food and drink and from his games and festivals man no more receives the joyful sense of his unity with the divine being the works of the muse lack the force and energy of the spirit which derived the certainty and assurance of itself just from the crushing ruin of gods and men they are themselves now just what they are for us beautiful fruit broken off the tree a kindly fate has passed on those works to us as a maiden might offer such fruit off a tree it is not their actual life as they exist that is given us not the tree that bore them not the earth and the elements which constituted their substance nor the climate that determined their constitutive character nor the change of seasons which controlled the process of their growth 
so too it is not their living world that fate preserves and gives us with those works of ancient art not the spring and summer of that ethical life in which they bloomed and ripened but the veiled remembrance alone of all this reality our action therefore when we enjoy them is not that of worship through which our conscious life might attain its complete truth and be satisfied to the full our action is external it consists in wiping off some drop of rain or speck of dust from these fruits and in place of the inner elements composing the reality of ethical life a reality that environed created and inspired these works we erect in prolix detail the scaffolding of the dead elements of their outward existence language historical circumstances etc all this we do not in order to enter into their very life but only to represent them ideally or pictorially vorstellen, within ourselves but just as the maiden who hands us the plucked fruits is more than the nature which presented them in the first instance the nature which provided all their detailed conditions and elements tree air light and so on since in a higher way she gathers all this together into the light of her self-conscious eye and her gesture in offering the gifts so too the spirit of the fate which presents us with those works of art is more than the ethical life realized in that nation for it is the inwardizing in us in the form of conscious memory erinnerung, of the spirit which in them was manifested in an outward external way it is the spirit of the tragic fate which collects all those individual gods and attributes of the substance into the one pantheon into the spirit which is itself conscious of itself as spirit all the conditions for its production are present and this totality of its conditions constitutes the development of it its notion or the inherent production of it the cycle of the creations of art embraces in its scope all forms in which the absolute substance relinquishes itself the absolute substance is in the form of individuality as a thing as an object existing for sense experience as mere language or the process of that form whose existence does not get away from the self and is a purely evanescent object as immediate unity with universal self-consciousness when inspired with enthusiasm as mediated unity when performing the acts of the cult as corporeal embodiment of the self in a form of beauty and finally as existence lifted into ideal representation Vorstellung, and the expansion of this existence into a world which at length gathers its content together into universality a universal which is at the same time pure certainty and assurance of itself these forms and on the other side the world of personality and legal right the wild and desert waste of content with its constituent elements set free and detached as also the thought constituted personality of stoicism and the unresting disquiet of scepticism these compose the periphery of the circle of shapes and forms which attend an expectant and eager throng round the birthplace of spirit as it becomes self-consciousness their centre is the yearning agony of the unhappy despairing self-consciousness a pain which permeates all of them and is the common birth-pang at its production the simplicity of the pure notion which contains those forms as its moments spirit here has in it two sides which are above represented as the two converse statements one is this that substance empties itself of itself and becomes self-consciousness the other is the converse that self-consciousness empties itself of itself and makes itself into the form of thing or makes itself universal self both sides have in this way met each other and in consequence their true union has arisen the relinquishment or kenosis on the part of the substance its becoming self-consciousness expresses the transition into the opposite the unconscious transition of necessity in other words that it is implicitly self-consciousness conversely the emptying of self-consciousness expresses this that implicitly it is universal being or because the self is pure self-existence which is at home with itself in its opposite that the substance is self-consciousness explicitly for the self and just on that account is spirit 
of this spirit which has left the form of substance behind and enters existence in the shape of self-consciousness we may say therefore if we wish to use terms drawn from the process of natural generation that it has a real mother but a potential or an implicit father for actual reality or self-consciousness and implicit being in the sense of substance are its two moments and by the reciprocity of their kenosis each relinquishing or emptying itself of itself and becoming the other spirit thus comes into existence as their unity in so far as self-consciousness in a one-sided way grasps only its own relinquishment although its object is thus for it at once both existence and self and it knows all existence to be spiritual in nature yet true spirit has not become thereby objective for it for so far being in general or substance would not necessarily from its side be also emptied of itself and become self-consciousness in that case then all existence is spiritual reality merely from the standpoint of consciousness not inherently in itself spirit in this way has merely a fictitious or imaginary existence this fanciful imagination is fantastic extravagance of mind which introduces into nature as well as history the world and the mythical ideas of early religions another inner esoteric meaning different from what they on the face of them bear directly to consciousness and in particular in the case of religions another meaning than the self-consciousness whose religions they were could find and admit to be there but this meaning is one that is borrowed a garment which does not cover the nakedness of the outer appearance and secures no belief and respect it is no more than murky darkness and the peculiar crazy twist of consciousness if then this meaning of the objective is not to be bare fancy and imagination it must be inherent and essential an sich that is must at once arise in consciousness as springing from the very notion and must come forward in its necessity it is thus that self-knowing spirit has arisen it has arisen by means of its necessary process through the knowledge of immediate consciousness that is of consciousness of the immediately existing object this notion which being immediate had also for consciousness the form of immediacy has in the second place taken on the form of self-consciousness essentially and inherently that is by just the same necessity of the notion by which being or immediacy the abstract object of sense consciousness renounces itself and becomes for consciousness ego the immediate entity an sich or objectively existent necessity is however different from the subjective thinking entity or the knowledge of necessity a distinction which at the same time does not lie outside the notion for the simple unity of the notion is itself immediate being the notion is at once what empties or relinquishes itself or the explicit unfolding of directly apprehended angeschaut necessity and is also at home with itself in that necessity knows it and comprehends it the immediate inherent nature of spirit which takes on the form of self-consciousness means nothing else than that the concrete actual world spirit has reached this knowledge of itself it is then too that this knowledge first enters its consciousness and enters it as truth how that came about has already been explained that absolute spirit has taken on the form of self-consciousness inherently and necessarily and has done so too as a conscious fact this position appears now as the belief of the world the belief that spirit exists in fact as a definite self-consciousness that is as an actual human being that spirit is an object for immediate experience that the believing mind sees feels and hears this divinity taken thus it is not an imagination not a fancy it is actual in the believer consciousness in that case does not set out from its own inner life does not start from thought and enclose the thought of god along with existence rather it sets out from immediate present existence and finds god there the moment of immediate existence is present as an element in the notion and present in such a way that the religious spirit 
on the return of all ultimate reality into consciousness has become simple positive self just as the actual spirit as such in the case of the unhappy consciousness was just this simple self-conscious negativity the self of the definitely existent spirit has in that way the form of complete immediacy it is neither set up as something thought or imaginatively represented nor as something produced as is the case with the immediate self both in natural religion and in religion as art rather this concrete god is beheld sensuously and immediately as a self as a real individual human being only so is it a self-consciousness this incarnation of the divine being its having essentially and directly the form of self-consciousness is the simple content of absolute religion here the divine being is known as spirit this religion is the divine being's consciousness concerning itself that it is spirit for spirit is knowledge of itself in its state of self-relinquishment the absolute reality which is the process of retaining its harmony and identity with itself in its otherness this however is substance so far as in its accidents substance at the same time turns back into itself and does so not as being indifferent towards something unessential and consequently finding itself in some alien element but as being there within itself that is so far as it is subject or self in this form of religion the divine being is on that account revealed its being revealed obviously consists in this that what it is is consciously known it is however known just in its being known as spirit as a being which is essentially self-consciousness there is something in the object always concealed from consciousness when the object is for consciousness an other something alien and extraneous and when consciousness does not know the object as itself this concealment this secrecy ceases when the absolute being qua spirit is object of consciousness for here in its relation to consciousness the object is in the form of self that is consciousness at once and immediately knows itself there or is manifest revealed to itself in the object itself is manifest to itself merely in its own certainty of self the object it has is the self self however is nothing alien and extraneous but inseparable unity with itself the immediate universal it is the pure notion pure thought or self-existence being for self which is immediately being and therewith being for another and qua this being for another is immediately turned back into itself and is at home with itself by sich it is thus the truly and solely revealed the good the righteous the holy creator of heaven and earth etc all these are predicates of a subject universal moments which have their hold on this central point and only are when consciousness goes back into thought as long as it is they that are known their ground and essential being the subject itself is not yet revealed and in the same way the specific determinations of the universal are not this universal itself the subject itself and consequently this pure universal too is however revealed as self for this self is just this inner being reflected into itself the inner being which is immediately given and is the proper certainty of that other self for which it is object to be in its notion that which reveals and is revealed this is then the true form of spirit and moreover this form its notion is alone its very essence and its substance spirit is known as self-consciousness and to this self-consciousness it is directly revealed for it is this self-consciousness itself the divine nature is the same as the human and it is this unity which is intuitively apprehended angeschaut here then we find as a fact consciousness or the general form in which being is aware of being the shape which being adopts to be identical with its self-consciousness this shape is itself a self-consciousness it is thus at the same time an existent object and this existence possesses equally directly the significance of pure thought 
of absolute being the absolute being existing as a concrete actual self-consciousness seems to have descended from its eternal pure simplicity but in fact it has in so doing attained for the first time its highest nature its supreme reach of being for when the notion of being has reached its simple purity of nature it is then both the absolute abstraction which is pure thought and hence the pure singleness of self and immediacy or objective being on account of its pure simplicity what is called sense consciousness is also just this pure abstraction it is this kind of thought for which being is the immediate the lowest is thus at the same time the highest the revelation which has appeared entirely on the surface is just therein the deepest that can be made that the supreme being is seen heard etc as an existent self-consciousness this is in very truth the culmination and consummation of its notion and through this consummation the divine being is given to sense exists immediately in its character as divine being this immediate existence is at the same time not solely and simply immediate consciousness it is religious consciousness this immediacy means not only an existent self-consciousness but also the purely thought constituted or absolute being and these meanings are inseparable what we the philosophers are conscious of in our conception that objective being is ultimate essence is the same as what the religious consciousness is aware of this unity of being and essence of thought which is immediately existence is immediate knowledge on the part of this religious consciousness just as it is the inner thought or the mediated reflective knowledge of this consciousness for this unity of being and thought is self-consciousness and actually exists in other words the thought constituted unity has at the same time this concrete shape and form of what it is god then is here revealed as he is he actually exists as he is in himself he is real as spirit god is attainable in pure speculative knowledge alone and only is in that knowledge and is merely that knowledge itself for he is spirit and this speculative knowledge is the knowledge furnished by revealed religion that knowledge knows god to be thought or pure essence and knows this thought as actual being and as real existence and existence as the negativity the reflection of itself hence as self a particular this and a universal self it is just this that revealed religion knows the hopes and expectations of preceding ages pressed forward to and were solely directed towards this revelation the vision of what absolute being is and the discovery of themselves therein this joy the joy of seeing itself an absolute being becomes realized in self-consciousness and seizes the whole world for the absolute is spirit it is the simple movement of those pure abstract moments which expresses just this that ultimate reality is then eo ipso known as spirit when it is seen and beheld as immediate self-consciousness this conception of spirit knowing itself to be spirit is still the immediate notion it is not yet developed the ultimate being is spirit in other words it has appeared it is revealed this first revelation is itself immediate but the immediacy is likewise thought or pure mediation and must therefore exhibit and set forth this moment in the sphere of immediacy as such looking at this more precisely spirit when self-consciousness is immediate is a particular this it is an individual self-consciousness set up in contrast to the universal self-consciousness it is a one a repelling and excluding unit which appears to that consciousness for which it exists in the impervious form of a sensuous other an unreduced opposite in the sphere of sense this other does not yet know spirit to be its own in other words spirit in its form as an individual self does not yet exist as equally universal self as all self or again the shape it assumes has not as yet the form of the notion 
that is of the universal self of the self which in its immediate actual reality is at once transcended is thought universality without losing its reality in this universality the preliminary and similarly immediate form of this universality is however not at once the form of thought itself of the notion as notion it is the universality of actual reality it is the allness the collective totality of the cells and is the elevation of existence into the sphere of presentative or figurative thought Vorstellung, just as in general to take a concrete example the this of sense when transcended is first of all the thing of perception and is not yet the universal of understanding this individual human being then which absolute being is revealed to be goes through in its own case as an individual the process found in sense existence he is the immediately present god in consequence his being passes over into his having been consciousness for which god is thus sensuously present ceases to see him to hear him it has seen him it has heard him and it is by the mere fact that it has seen and heard him that it first becomes itself spiritual consciousness or in other words he has now arisen in the life of spirit as he formerly rose before consciousness as an object existing in the sphere of sense for a consciousness which sees and hears him by sense is one which is itself merely an immediate consciousness which has not cancelled and transcended the disparateness of objectivity has not withdrawn it into pure thought but accepts this objectively presented individual and not itself as spirit in the disappearance of the immediate existence of what is known to be absolute being immediacy preserves its negative moment spirit remains the immediate self of actual reality but in the form of the universal self-consciousness of a religious communion a self-consciousness which rests in its own proper substance just as in it this substance is universal subject it is not the individual subject by himself but the individual along with the consciousness of the communion and what he is for this communion is the complete whole of the individual spirit the terms past and distance are however merely the imperfect form in which the immediateness gets mediated or made universal this is merely dipped superficially in the element of thought is kept there as a sensuous mode of immediacy and not made one with the nature of thought itself it is lifted out of sense merely into the region of ideation of pictorial presentation for this is the synthetic external connection of sensuous immediacy and its universality or thought end of section twenty seven